Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 15th of May. I want to focus mostly today on what's happening with the India variant as it's spreading around the world, probably in 44 countries at least at the moment, maybe more. Now, I was looking at this and there was a few things that were concerning. So I want to start off with a bit of balance, first of all. So it's not like a, a sort of a too much anxiety inducing so but we know it's spreading so and this is the indian variant of concern here it's the b1617 and it's the 0.21 that seems to be causing the uh, the spread now just to give a bit of balance first of all joint committee on vaccine and immunization professor anthony harnden now um this was him reporting on british radio this morning uh, he says vaccines are almost certainly less effective at reducing transmission of the india variant so so that's bad um, somewhat, he didn't give a figure on it, but somewhat um, the vaccines aren't preventing as much transmission as the other, uh, as, as with the other strains of the virus. The vaccine may be less effective against mild disease. In other words, people still may get mildly symptomatic disease. So, so far, um, really quite concerning, but fortunately there is some really important balance here. Uh, but we don't think they're effective against. We don't think they're less effective against severe disease. So it look, looks like what he's saying here is that the vaccine is protecting people against severe disease caused by the uh, India variant. It's still protecting against severe disease. Therefore, hopefully, hospitalizations and deaths. So this is the bit to hang on to. The vaccines do seem to be preventing severe disease perhaps to the same degree uh, with the India variant as with the previous variant. So that, that's really good news. And then he says, all the evidence so far suggests there is no evidence of increased severity of illness or that the variant evades the vaccine. So, OK, he's saying it, it can, there could be more transmission, there could be uh, more mild illness, but not more serious illness. And of course, this is the one that's important. I mean, prefer not to have a mild illness of course prefer not to have any illness at all but um um i'd like that the main thing is that we don't have the severe illness so it's looking promising from that point of view now india um case wise i'm afraid um well the official numbers are going are going down somewhat but um we know there's limited testing going on in india so basically there's still a lot of problems going on in india and the death rates of course are still are still going up in India. This is the, uh, that's the uh, the 4,000 line there. So we see the deaths around about the 4,000 a day, uh, equating to the 400,000 or so ca new cases per day. Now on, on the, um, on, on the, all the YouTube channels and everything, there's plenty of uh, live footage from India, but I'm just gonna play you a little bit just to give us a feel. This is from the city called Kolkata, which used to be called Calcutta. Um. In the entrance of a public hospital nearby, people are already struggling to get basic care. All the beds here. Hundreds are already full. And the sick keep coming. I don't know how long we can continue like this, says Dr. Kuldeep Botabyal. Even a war comes to an end. But here, it's wave after wave. One in six people in the world live in India. And Kolkata is among its most densely populated cities. COVID has reached places where families live together in one-room homes. Distancing is impossible. As it spreads unchecked, the virus is taking on new, more worrying forms. The highly infectious variant that's spreading through India has now reached more than 40 countries around the world, including the UK. This is not an Indian problem. What's happening here could affect the world's ability to recover from the pandemic. Okay, so just a quick uh, glimpse there of what's um, 
what's happening in India and, and, and those conditions you see there in India are, are unfortunately really quite typical so you can check that out for yourself that's the uh, that's the link for that clip so while we talk about the India variant spreading to other parts of the world um, we just need to spare that time to think about the way that people are still suffering in India itself Nepal also uh, just north of India of course and again um, we're seeing ongoing increase in cases in Nepal driven by the India variant now the genomic testing in India is very limited it's only 0.1% uh, of all positive tests so one in a thousand of all positive tests I believe are being tested in India and there are problems with the UK variant as well as with the India variant but it seems to be that the Indian variant is out competing the UK variant at the moment. Now, moving on to um, the UK now, um, this is the website here where we get the information about the uh, variance distribution of cases and data in the UK. So um, obviously I've included that link so you can check it out for yourself. But, but here's the sort of headline data if you want. Um, so th th this is the variant we're most concerned about, the uh, B16172. And the numbers of that have been identified in the UK of that are now 1,313. But that's up 793 cases on the week. So that is a concerning rise. But... Uh, Check out all the variants at that site. Always good to go back to the um, to the original sites if you can to check that the data is accurate. So um, Sage now confirmed it's more transmissible than the existing variant. Not sure how much. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is just the headlines. Professor Chris Whitty, that's a really critical question to which we do not yet have the answer, but it is starting to emerge realistic possibility it could be 50% more transmissible probably it will become the dominant strain in the UK outbreak in Glasgow showing this is not just in England um, 35 cases at the moment public health public health England actually saying uh, 35 cases in Scotland Northern Ireland 12 Wales 11 so it already re already is all over the country although the main clusters are still in England now, what I want to do now is look in a little more detail from the, uh, this is from the SAGE report. So again, I've put the link there. Um, check on this for yourself. The whole information is there. I've just sort of condensed some of the main points um, from the SAGE report. But it's always good to go and look at the original sources as much as we can. So SAGE report, 13th of May, 89th meeting. The R rate in England is hovering on either side of the 1, just below the 1 in Wales, just below the 1 in Scotland, probably just below the 1, or around the 1 in Northern Ireland. Um, so possibilities of increase now in parts of the UK, particularly England. And if the Indian variant becomes more prevalent, then that could well happen in Wales and Scotland as well. So these are this is directly from the SAGE report. There are now multiple fast-growing clusters of this variant in the UK, I am afraid. Largest is in the northwest of England. When they say northwest, I mean, I'm, I'm in the very northwest of England. When they say northwest, it's a bit south to me. But they mean round about Bolton, sort of Manchester area. Doubling time of the new variant, um, about a week, as we've just seen from the figures. Now, in some areas, it's higher. In some areas, it's lower. In some areas, it seems to have doubled in the last three or four days, which is concerning. Places where uh, transmission of this variant occurs have different characteristics to each other. Now, what they're saying here is that there's the, the India variant is becoming more prevalent in several areas in the country. And it's not as if these areas are all the same. They're different environmental circumstances in different areas. In other words... The increase in rate is probably caused by the intrinsic biology of the variant. And that is that is concerning. It's the intrinsic biology of the variant that seems to be powering this spread. Plausible biological reasons as to why some of the uh, mutations present. 
could make the virus more transmissible. And we know that this is due to mutations primarily in the spike protein that we've looked at quite a few times. So they're saying that there is evidence that it is the biology of the virus that's powering these uh, growth, growth of these clusters. And that makes sense because we understand something of the uh, the the proteome the protein structure of the virus how the, how the protein structure of the virus is affected by the mutant how that is changing the transmiss transmissibility of the virus this makes scientific sense and of course some of the people on sage are obviously uh, leading um, world authorities on this on on this variant so this is sort of hanging together scientifically it is it is uh, internally consistent um in the area where numbers of infection are increasing rapidly under the measures currently in place, an even faster increase can be expected if the measures are relaxed and they are highly confident of this. So in other words, this variant is being kept uh, in place to some extent by the current um, restrictions, but as they're relaxed, they are highly confident that the numbers of the variant will increase is what I believe Sage is saying there. Now, if this variant were to have a 40 to 50 percent transmission advantage nationally compared to B117, the, the current variant or the current predominant variant. So if it's 40 or 50 percent now, they don't know this, but if it is, and these are the kind of figures they're talking about, indicates that it is likely that progression with a step three alone would lead to a substantial resurgence of hospitalizations is what they're currently saying. Now, the plan is that stage three opening up goes ahead now we've looked at the these these are now my well uh where am i these are now my well thumbed um copies of the or print out of the stages of reopening in the uk and of course stage three is due to happen on monday and uh we're going to have these liberal uh, liberation <laughs> liberalizations or liberations whatever the word is um of the uh the rules particularly this one, two households can mix indoors, which could result in uh, more spreading pubs, restaurants, eating indoors and all the other, all the, all the other things that are happening. And, and this is going ahead in England on uh, Monday. So it's looking like there is going to be an increase in transmission of this India variant is what Sage is saying. Progression with both steps three and four at the earlier states could lead to much larger peaks. So we know stage three is going ahead now. Stage four in June is now uh, open to question. Now, what about the immune escape of this virus? The stage, sage comment on this. Um, maybe some reduction in the protection given by vaccines or naturally acquired immunity from past infection. Although data on this is still mixed. Um, but from what we're seeing in India, it's looking like the vaccines will have some degree of reduced efficacy. But as we saw, um, hopefully not for the most severe forms of disease, for significant disease and hospitalizations. Um, any such reduction is likely to affect protection against infection more than protection against severe disease and death. Well, this is exactly what we have been saying. This is consistent with what the Joint Board for Vaccination is saying. Uh, that it, there could be more infections, but hopefully not more severe disease and death. Not yet any clear evidence of any difference in disease severity following the infection of this variant. Now, this was good to see uh, that they're saying there is no evidence that this causes more severe disease. Um, rapid sequencing of hospital cases and infection post variant is important. So people that are hospitalized and there are still some. It's important that they get genomic analysis so we can see if there's a disproportionately high number of people who have the infection caused by the Indian variant being hospitalised. That would then indicate that the India variant is causing more hospitalisations and potentially more severe disease. If we find out that the number of people hospitalised, there is, if we find in the people hospitalised there's not an increase in the India variant, then that, that would be good news, indicating that it's not causing more severe disease. Uh, but of course, we're continuing to review different vaccine strategies. Now, there has been a change in vaccine strategy in the UK. Um, so people over the age of 50 in the UK now are not going to have to wait the 10, 11, 12 weeks for their second dose of vaccine. They're going to be given their second dose of vaccine at eight weeks. 
And the rationale behind this is that the government want as many people in the older age groups to be protected from this new wave that may well come as possible. So that even if there is spread of the India variant, as now looks like it's going to happen in younger age groups, uh, the older age group will be more protected because, again, it's the older age group that are, are more likely to be affected by severe disease. Having said that, there are slight blips in hospital admissions in Bolton, very slight blips that are increases in cases in Glasgow as well. Uh, 35 to 50 year olds, um, perhaps. We haven't got firm data on this, but there does seem to be more 35 to 50 year olds or a few 35 to 50 year olds admitted in Bolton. And of course, this is the age group that have not yet been vaccinated or are still waiting the three weeks for the vaccine to take effect. But of course, every time that we vaccinate someone extra, uh, that means there's someone else not getting vaccinated because the supply of vaccines is limited. So uh, surge vaccine numbers have been sent to areas where there are clusters of this virus. That's good because it means those people in those areas are going to get vaccinated more quickly and that can somewhat reduce the spread of the virus, not totally as we know because Sage have already said that, but it will reduce the spread of the virus to some extent. But of course that means people in other areas are not getting the vaccine as quickly as we would like them to get. And the other thing about this variant that is concerning me is the potential for spread to other countries. Now the UK is already fairly highly vaccinated, as, as we know fairly highly vaccinated but other areas like Ireland or France or Germany less so and we know that there's tens of cases in these European countries now Ireland I think officially they're reporting about 34 uh, cases of the India variant at the, at the moment but of course the real number is higher the genomic testing in Ireland is not as good as the genomic testing in uh, England for example um, so that means that the virus will probably spread fairly rapidly in these areas and because fewer people have been vaccinated, uh, the proportion of people that get sick could be higher. So um, it, it is a concern for the UK in that the cases are going to increase, but that probably won't cause a lot of increased hospitalizations, although some sage projections are showing that it will, so there's still unknowns. But I think what we can be fairly sure about is in unvaccinated countries, the surge in infections will lead will lead to an increase in cases and, and we've just seen the tragic consequences of that in uh, India. Now um, I did write this down before so talks out of sync today but but there we go. Um, um, this is from the uh, Centers for Disease Control. I meant to mention this before. Uh, in the United States do peruse that lots of interesting things. Uh, that is the link. A direct quote, there are currently five variants of concern in the United States. Well, let's, let's look at them. B117 UK, B1351 South Africa, P1 Brazil, and the two California variants. Now, if you think that these are the only five variants present in the United States, put your hands up now. Well, I'm afraid I don't see any hands up. So like you, I suspect there are other variants in the United States that have simply not been picked up because of the low levels of genomic sequencing. So direct quote from the CDC and uh, the genomic sequencing is increasing in the States, but it's still low-ish, low compared to the UK, low compared to Denmark. And the CDC is not reporting any cases at all of the India variant. Uh, let's hope that this is the case, that there are zero cases of the India variant in the United States. But I think you and I know there probably is. So um, there we go. That's the concern at the moment. So the concern is... Where am I? The concern is that this could be a significant problem in areas of the world that are under vaccinated. Now, if this was in Goa, um, the, the, they would be using ivermectin as a prophylaxis. 
So if ivermectin was effective as a prophylaxis, we could be giving this out to the areas round about Bolton, preventing people getting the infection and therefore preventing them spreading it on. Um, but of course, we're never going to find out if that would be effective in the UK because it's not going to happen. But because of the evidence and the actions of Goa and other places in India using ivermectin as a prophylaxis, I really feel that the medical authorities in the UK should stand up and tell us about this. Why are we not being told about this? So there's so much evidence about the possible efficacy of ivermectin as a prophylactic treatment. It merits an official opinion. Now, Chris Whitty or Patrick Vance or whatever stand, wants to stand up and say, look, I've had my teams review the evidence for ivermectin prophylaxis and we don't believe it's helpful. Or they could say, well, I've had my team review the evidence for ivermectin prophylaxis and we don't believe it's a safe thing to do. Um, fair enough. Fair, fair enough if, that, if that's their decision. But, but why don't they say something? Why is this not commented on? There is so much evidence uh, on ivermectin now that, it, that their silence really is not no longer acceptable. And uh, if it is ivermectin is effective, say, well, yes, we're going to use this. If it's not, then tell, tell us of not. And of course, we'll, we'll do what they're told because we live in a law abiding country. We have to go by national rules. But I, I call on, I call on the, the medical authorities in, in the UK and, and around the world for that matter to um, give official statements on this so that we know where we stand. And then that will clarify the situation nicely. And if it's helpful, it could curtail this pandemic. Uh, significantly so there we are if you're in the uk monday uh, quite a lot of liberalizations um, go forward with caution and responsibility because it's not just you it's it's everyone else we're all in this together so a bit disappointing really things were looking so much better but this is this is an issue and we're going to hear more about it unfortunately over the next over the next uh, few weeks but it's going to be the countries with low vaccine levels i feel that will suffer uh, most potentially from this uh, let, let's hope we're wrong thanks for watching of course